We're glad you're here because insulin pump therapy makes managing and living with diabetes easier. As managing diabetes with an insulin pump is different from managing it with multiple daily injections, or MDI, you'll benefit from understanding the differences. In this section, we'll explore basal rates and bolus doses, different kinds of insulin, carbohydrate counting, and factors considered in calculating a bolus dose. You may be wondering, what is a basal rate? To answer that question, let's begin by looking at what our bodies need. We all need a small, constant supply of insulin for normal cell activity. If you did not have diabetes, your pancreas would continuously deliver insulin throughout the day. To keep your blood glucose level within a normal range, your pancreas would vary the amount it delivered based on how much glucose is currently in your blood, your physical activity, and the type and amount of food you eat. Because your pancreas has limited or no ability to produce insulin, you must deliver insulin directly to your body using multiple daily injections of insulin or an insulin pump to manage your diabetes. One part of the treatment with an insulin pump consists of a small amount of insulin being delivered continuously for a period of time, similar to what the pancreas does. This amount is called a basal rate, and it's measured in units per hour. Remember, the pancreas varies the amount of insulin it delivers because your body needs more or less insulin at different times. Along with basal insulin delivery, bolus doses are also needed to keep your blood glucose within an acceptable range. A bolus is an additional dose of insulin for meals and or correcting a high blood glucose value. For example, you may need an additional dose of insulin called a meal bolus because you are about to eat a meal or snack that is likely to raise your blood glucose level. You may also need an additional dose of insulin called a correction bolus to reduce your blood glucose when it is above your target level. In addition to understanding basal rates and bolus doses, you should know the different kinds of insulin and the different ways to take insulin. First, you may have used long-acting and or rapid-acting insulin. Long-acting insulin stays active in your body longer, so you take it less often. Rapid-acting insulin stays active a shorter time, so you take it more often. Next, you may take insulin via pump therapy or MDI, which work differently from each other. When using MDI, healthcare prescribers commonly provide a long-acting and a rapid-acting insulin. With an insulin pump, only rapid-acting insulin is used and released continuously into your body. With pump therapy, you have better control over the amount and the rate at which insulin is released than with MDI. Your healthcare providers will provide settings for your pump to deliver the basal rates that they determine will work for you. Over time, they can adjust your basal settings or include multiple programs. When you need additional insulin to correct your blood glucose, BG, or to match your carb intake, you can deliver that insulin by programming a bolus dose. When you program a bolus dose, you will be asked to provide two pieces of information, your current BG, and if you are going to eat, the grams of the carbs. Your pump will then use these values along with your personalized bolus settings to provide a suggested bolus amount. We will go more in detail on how the Omnipod calculates a bolus dose later in this training. Let's take a look at how what you eat impacts your care. Carbohydrate, carb counting, is an important part of managing your diabetes. You probably eat many different kinds of food. Some foods may raise your blood glucose because they contain carbs. When your body digests food, it turns carbs into glucose very quickly. Nearly 100% of digestible starches and sugars become glucose within two hours of being eaten. So foods high in carbs have the greatest effect on blood glucose. For example, Starches in some vegetables, fruit and fruit juice, milk and milk products, and sweets and desserts may affect your blood glucose. Throughout the day, you will need additional doses of insulin when you eat meals or snacks that are likely to raise your blood glucose. This insulin dose is called a meal bolus. The type of food you eat affects how much insulin you'll need to keep your blood glucose at an acceptable level. It's important to track the amount of carbohydrates you're eating by counting carbs. So, how do you do this? If eating packaged food, read the nutrition facts labels. These labels tell you how many grams of carbs are in a single serving of the food. Look for the serving size information at the top of the label. In this example, a serving is two crackers. But remember, a package may hold more than one serving. For example, this package contains 21 servings. Next, find the section called Total Carbohydrates. It tells you how many grams of carbs are in one serving. To find out how many total grams you are eating, 
multiply the number of grams in one serving by the number of servings that you are eating. Each serving of two of these crackers contains 10 grams of carbs. If you eat four crackers, you've eaten 20 grams of carbs. When you eat foods without labels, there are other ways to count carbs. One way is to ask your dietitian or healthcare provider for a list of foods that shows you their carb counts. Also, your Omnipod Insulin Management System has a reference library of carb counts for many foods. Many of our users have also reported smartphone applications to be very helpful in finding out the carb counts in their meals, especially when eating out. Before you begin using the Omnipod Insulin Management System, it is a good idea to meet with a registered dietitian to review your meal planning and carb counting skills. Unlike basal rates, bolus doses will be programmed by you throughout the day. Once you have planned your meals and counted carbs, the Omnipod Insulin Management System will help you calculate a bolus dose for meals and correction boluses with the suggested bolus calculator. This calculator considers your current blood glucose level, the number of grams of carbs you are about to eat, and your insulin on board, or IOB. IOB, the amount of insulin that is still active in your body from a previous meal and or correction bolus, depends on the duration of the insulin action, time since the previous bolus, and the amount of the previous bolus. IOB helps prevent the stacking of insulin when bolusing. In addition, you and your healthcare provider will determine other factors based on the way your body processes insulin that affect the calculation of bolus doses. First, the insulin to carbohydrate ratio, or IC ratio, tells you how much insulin you need to take in relation to carbs eaten. For example, if your IC ratio is 1 to 15, then you need to deliver one unit of insulin to cover every 15 grams of carbs that you eat. Next, the correction factor or sensitivity factor tells you how much one unit of insulin will lower your blood glucose level. For example, if your correction factor is 50, it means that one unit of insulin will lower your blood glucose by approximately 50 milligrams per deciliter. Finally, your target blood glucose value is the blood glucose value you are trying to achieve in your day-to-day -day diabetes management. Here is an example of how a bolus is calculated. Let's say your blood glucose value is 150 milligrams per deciliter, and you are about to eat 45 grams of carbs in your meal. Your insulin to carb ratio is one unit to 15 grams. Your correction factor is 50, and your target BG is 100 milligrams per deciliter. This is your first bolus of the day, so you do not have any insulin on board from a previous bolus. Your correction bolus would be your current BG of 150 mg per deciliter minus your target BG of 100 mg per deciliter, which equals 50 mg per deciliter above your target. 50 mg per deciliter is then divided by your correction factor, which is 50. This equals a 1 unit bolus. Next, your meal bolus would be the amount of carbs of 45 grams divided by your ratio of 15, which would equal a 3-unit bolus. Therefore, a 1-unit correction bolus plus a 3-unit meal bolus equals a 4-unit suggested bolus. The great news is, once you've started on your Omnipod, all you will have to do is provide a blood glucose value and an amount of carbs. The PDM takes care of the math. Thanks for joining us today. You've taken an important step toward making managing your diabetes easier.